This guy's a narcissistic pop psych, and here's why. It stands for popular psychology, and through YouTube, I will become popular, and I'll be a popular psychologist. I'm David Colarossi. No, it's Dr. David Colarossi. I have a master's degree in marriage and family therapy and a PhD in counseling psychology. You are such a genius. One of the most destructive personality characteristics is narcissism. Today, we're gonna to identify the four steps required to manipulate the narcissist in your life. I wanted to use this video to talk about Donald Trump and whether or not he meets the diagnostic criteria of narcissistic personality disorder. I thought it would be really fun to walk through the DSM's catalog of characteristics that fit for a narcissist and then show clips of Donald Trump's behavior of the last three years. Um, so I did a quick YouTube search and it turns out that Jimmy Kimmel has done that exact same thing. So bully for me for uh, having an idea like Kimmel just three years later, whatever it was, uh, and also it doesn't add that much value. I guess logically, if the entire world wants to know if you're a narcissist, you probably show some of those characteristics. Uh, I will say my, my, there is one caveat to that, which is to say that narcissism is a personality disorder. In order to meet the criteria for a personality disorder, you have to have a pervasive pattern uh, in different areas of your life. So you can't just be a narcissist at work uh, and, and get that diagnosis. You have to be a narcissist at work and then also at school and somewhere else. You have to be that way in at least two areas of your life. Um, in Trump's case, I thought initially, well, maybe he's got good, you know, familial relationships, you know, Donald Trump Jr. seems to like him a lot. Uh, but I think if you probably looked at the, if you probably uh, uh, interviewed his ex-wives or the folks that are suing him in all those lawsuits, uh, he probably would uh, click off many of those criteria at home and in the political arena. So we can lay that one to rest. But I thought it would be fun to talk about narcissism in general and how you can manipulate it. So n the first thing to understand is what a narcissist is. So a narcissist is a very insecure person. What creates a narcissist is somebody who has a very low sense of self and they sort of feel unstable, they have really poor attachment, they don't know who they are. In an effort to protect themselves from that, they tell themselves how great they are. And they can project that sense of greatness in a lot of different ways. You have the overt narcissist who you know, is really grandiose and loud and shows a lot of bravado. And then you have the people that are more covert about it and they're just very, uh, quietly self-focused and self-centered. Narcissists, by definition, are not just selfish. They actually don't recognize their impact on others. It's not that they're showing a lack of empathy. They just don't get that there are other people around them that they're negatively affecting. And so as a consequence, then they don't show any empathy because they, they really don't care. Sorry for the interruption. When I was editing this video together, I remember that I wanted to share a story that I totally spaced when I was putting it together. I'm too lazy to go put that white shirt back on so you're getting the sweatshirt look now. Uh, to give some perspective of my view of uh, narcissism, I wanted to share uh, a really early experience I had working in the mental health field. So when you are going through school to become a therapist or a psychologist, uh, the less education and experience you have, the sort of more difficult uh, population you're forced to work with as an intern, right? The folks that can pay for expensive treatment uh, usually do so, so they don't want a free intern. Uh, so when I was a free intern, one of the very first places I worked worked in was in the San Fernando Valley in California, uh, and we really worked with pervasive, pervasive mental illness. One of the first group experience, experiences I had as a co-facilitator was with an anxiety management group, um, and it had, I think, six or seven people in the group, kind of a motley crew of characters. One of the women in the group, I'm going to guess, was probably 72, 73, and... Uh, and you know, she was in general pretty quiet throughout the group session. And then towards the end of the session, I remember her started, she started crying and she pulled, she unzipped her fanny pack. It was a black leather fanny pack, I'll never forget. And she pulls out this wrinkled piece, like a, a really wrinkled piece of paper. And she starts crying and she goes, I, I think I'm ready now to share this. And it was, a, it was an adoption paper. It was, the, it was the sort of receipt that she received after giving her children up for adoption back when she was 17 or 20. And you know, later in life now, she was ready to go and pursue to see if she could actually find those kids. It was a very emotional moment. I was like, holy shit, this therapy thing is real. You know, and everybody in the group is crying. And then there's this one woman who is just to my left, who is probably 65, who who turns to the group and goes, 
I don't get it. Why are you all upset? How could she adopt her? How could she put her kids up for adoption? I had no money and I didn't put my kids up for adoption. I was a great mom. I could not believe that someone would do that. It was like the most like sort of discordant response that I had ever experienced. So the group end, ends and then after the, the session, I turned to the seasoned psychologist that was co-facilitating the group and I said, what was that? And he said, that is what a narcissist is. And he, he was helping me understand that there's a, differentiating, a differentiation between someone who is selfish, me, 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 um, and, I don't, and I don't care about how you feel about it, right? It's just sort of like a pure selfishness versus a, lack, a total lack of recognition that there are other people in the world. And in the case of NPD or narcissistic personality disorder, there's this real sort of sense of isolation that a narcissist feels because they're so distant from really everybody else. Anyway, that gives some context to what narcissism is and thought it would be helpful as I'm going through this list of, you know, how to deal with them. Narcissist. Before we can get into the actual steps, I want to give you an overview of what causes narcissism. At their core, narcissists are very insecure people. They don't have good attachment and they're not able to create the relationships required to really understand who they are in the world. So they feel this deep sense of shame and guilt and insecurity. And instead of feeling that, they have this maladaptive pattern of pushing people away. If I push you away and tell you how great I am, then you're gonna respect me, you're gonna back off, and I can go around with this sort of propped up sense of self. It's a maladaptive strategy, but it does effectively protect them from feeling hurt constantly. So the first step in manipulating a narcissist is to listen to them. If somebody has that level of insecurity, they're gonna show it in many areas of their life. So for example, you might be interacting with somebody at work who is very self-conscious about their critical thinking skills. They're worried about their intellectual horsepower, and so they show up by being the smartest person in the room. Maybe they're not gonna to listen to anybody. Maybe they're gonna deny all of your alternative ideas. As the other person in the room, that can be really frustrating. But you need to get beyond that, and you need to listen and figure out what is it that's causing this person to act this way. And if you can recognize that it's because they're feeling insecure about their own ideas, it gives you a lot of power in that relationship. Step two is to take perspective. When you're interacting with a narcissist, you will feel a great sense of anger, frustration. You will feel dejected and pushed aside. And your natural reaction will be to become so frustrated that you're personally involved in the interaction, right? You lose perspective and it becomes really important to you that you make things right with this narcissist. And you have to recognize that any interaction with somebody like that, if they really meet that diagnostic criteria, it's not about creating a close connection with them. It's not about changing their behavior over time. No, no, it's about you surviving that interaction in a way that's palatable for you. The second piece of that is recognizing how much you can compromise. You can distance yourself from the narcissist. You can make it not personal, but there are times when you can't flex on certain issues. You have to identify what those issues are. The third step is to flex. We know what the narcissist needs. We know how much we can give and we're not taking it personal. The next step is to adjust. Give the narcissist what they want as long as it's not sacrificing whatever we identified in step two. We have this sort of idea, I, th I don't know if it's a societal thing or, or, or a moral thing, I don't know what it is, but a lot of people, a lot of my clients are reluctant to give in to the narcissist. They feel like if they flex and adjust, if they validate the narcissism, that somehow they're rewarding it and they're gonna create a bigger narcissist, that somehow they're, uh, sacrificing their own their own value system. There's this big reluctance around flexing. People want to teach the narcissist a lesson. They want to stop the behavior. The reality is you cannot change the behavior. All you can do is decide, how do I want to interact with them? And if you can, flex. The step four is recognizing that you're in power. The pushback I always get from clients when talking about how to navigate relationships with difficult people is that they don't want to be manipulated. There's this great fear of being controlled and manipulated by somebody that has those narcissistic traits. And what you have to recognize is if you are listening to somebody, identifying what drives their behavior, figuring out how much you can flex, how much you can't flex, and then adjusting your style to meet their needs to ensure that that relationship works the way you want it to, you're in charge, you're in power, you're in control. You're the puppet master. So while they're getting what they want and while they may be happy, they're happy and getting what they want because you did something intentionally. You're in control and should be proud of that. 
It's not some. It's not like you've made some big sacrifice and, and lost ground. No, no, no. You've navigated that relationship in a very intentional way. So those are the four steps. Listen, take perspective, flex, and remember that you're in power. Hope that was helpful. See you soon. Oh, and like and subscribe.